Hey everybody, it's the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host. Uh, my my buddy Pastor Pastor Schomberger is here with us today. How you doing? I'm good. Good to be with you. Awesome. So, uh, he, he, Pastor, you are settling into your first call, um, and so we're gonna we're gonna throw one to you that that probably gets beaten around the bush at probably nobody wants to talk about it directly, but it's real important to talk about. Uh, right. Do you have to go to church to be a Christian? Well, you're <laughs> you're asking that you're asking the question. Uh, that's actually a really good question. It's a relevant question. Um, but uh, I would say uh, it's not a good question. <laughs> it, they it's did the this wrong, to us in it, school. Or, or maybe, yeah. maybe it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not the most helpful question uh, because when you ask something like that, uh, you know, that's asking something in the way of the law. Yeah. Meaning, if I do this, then, and there's, you're going to get an answer that you're probably not going to like. Right. You ask a law question, you're going to get a law you're answer. You're going to get a law answer. Uh, we, had, we had a teacher, a professor that would do this to us. It was, it was really, really frustrating until we got to sit sort of in his chair. Uh, but we would ask these questions in class and you would just stop. Wrong question. What's well, yeah. the one I want to know? So is it the wrong question? Not helpful is a good way to talk about it. All right. So let's maybe tease it out then. Like what, what's, sure. a, what's a law answer to a law question then? Well, a law, uh, a law answer is always going to end in condemnation and death because that's what the law does. It, uh, it condemns us uh, and it kills. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really the only way to deal with our sinful flesh is that. So the law yeah. is necessary and good. It's uh, actually we, supposed to, to make not. you wrestle with that. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what it has to make you wrestle with, that, that we are yeah. not as good as uh, we wish that we were. And so like there is a commandment yeah. that's sort of rooted in this. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And our catechism helps us that we should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching in his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear it and learn it. And so there, yeah, man, church is, uh, sounds like it's kind of on the table. Yeah. And, and maybe, uh, maybe a way that's more helpful is first to begin with the Lord, begin with his word, mm. uh, begin with his start. promise and what he gives us. Okay. You know what I mean? Sure. And so if we maybe a better way to ask that is why would the Lord have us go to church? And what why would God have us uh even as Christians? Because we sort of have this idea that, you know, well, salvation, that was something that happened to me back then, you know, when I was baptized, but now it's kind of up to me. I gotta do mm -hmm. my part and just mm -hmm. get it done. Uh and and uh and that's false. Because not only do we begin uh, by our Lord's gift, but we are sustained and we continue and we're kept by it. And the, so I would, I would point people to the third article of the creed in that mm, uh, with the work of the Holy go. Spirit. And where's the certain place where God uh, gives his name and his promise mm. and his presence? Because wherever his name is, right, there that, he that, is. Where we're, yeah. Right. And uh, I think it was uh, Ignatius, uh, old dead saint who's not really dead. He's asleep. He's with I the like Lord. It. <laughs> but he said, where, where Jesus is, there's the church. Yeah. And so uh, the real question is, is why would somebody who is a Christian not want to be where Jesus is, giving out his gifts to keep you, sustain you, uh, and... Uh, and make you his own. Continue. And that, yeah. yeah, that part actually is pretty easy to answer too. It's another law question, but uh, the the law answer then is is because of either his body or my body. Um, mm. I don't go to church because of my body because I'm tired and I would rather sort of give in to just like you know waffles on Sunday morning. I, and also <laughs> his sure. body because I have to deal with other Christians and you know I, Jesus is hard enough to love. I cannot by my own reason or strength do it. He has to actually give me the gift of faith. It's even harder than to love his fan club uh, who is sinful where he is not. Um, there, there's a lot of reason that that I've always been given to, to people who, who don't want to come to where Jesus has promised to be. But both of those are kind of worth addressing. How, how would you address sort of I don't want to go there because of what I want to do. And, and then I don't want to sure. go there because of who else is there. No, absolutely. And, and those are probably both true. And here's why you know they're true is because you're still in sinful flesh. Mm -hmm. So while you're still a sinner, which we confess at the beginning of every service, right? We have confession before we can have an absolution. There's no need for an absolution if I'm not a sinner, right? If I mm -hmm. am doing fine. But in that, in that way, there is 
you know, always going to be that there's three problems. And Luther talks about it uh, in these Christian questions and their answers. At the very end, after he asks the question, why should we even go to the sacrament? Why should we, why do we need the Lord's Supper? Uh, and he's like, feel to see if you're flesh and blood. Put your hand on your chest and see if your heart's beating, basically. Are you breathing? Right. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the first reason you need to go to church, because you're in sinful flesh. Yeah. Second, okay. uh, he says, uh, look where you live. You live in a world that hates God. You live mm-hmm. in a world that doesn't believe uh, and can't, right? Uh, this was true at the time of Jesus. It's certainly true today. And the final one is because of the devil. He doesn't ever cease. And the, and Luther gets to that in the large catechism where he talks about uh, the the Sabbath and what does it mean that it, how is something kept holy? Uh, and, and he says, well, we need the word of God all the time because that's how anything's holy is through the word and prayer. Mm-hmm. But it, it also, we need it all the time. So every day must be holy in that sense, right? Um, not just one day, but all days. Why? Because the devil doesn't cease. So I need to pray. I need the word of God. I have to have it. Uh, so right. it's it's in the way of uh, what a great gift God gives us that his word is available to us, that his gifts are there promised uh, in the service. That's a different question then. Because like you can answer it in or ask it in the world too. Like, so if, if you are hungry, where would, what would you do? I would go to where the yeah. food is. And so, yeah, if, if if you as a Christian know what help looks like, if you happen to need it, where would you want to go? So, so yeah, I mean, bottom line is, uh, you know, we have in the commandment, we have the misuse of God's name in the second commandment. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but then we have the right use of God's name, even in the second commandment, but it's given to us in the gift of the Lord's prayer uh, and the promise that... Uh, I can call upon him in any trouble, anytime I am needy, which I don't recognize this because I'm still in sinful flesh, but I'm needy all the time. I can't even breathe without God giving that breath to me. Sure. So if this is the case, then um, I, I asked the wrong question. What, what would you sort of reframe it as uh, to, a, to a right one? And then from there, just sort of in a, a one word little or one sentence little answer, how would you address it? Yeah, I would say, where is Jesus? Uh, giving promise to be present for you. Yeah. Well, and, I and, I, and I know that that's in his word, right? But mm-hmm. specifically uh, in the third, third article, uh, we're told that he's, he's there present in the gospel as it's right. preached, as I hear it, and where the sacraments are given out. And, and also there, I love the, what, the way the third article takes this because it starts with my own reason and strength, I can't do it. But God gives this gift to me. And in the same way, he gives it to all believers, the whole church. Everybody gets the same thing. So I'm not, I'm not alone, even mm-hmm. though I think in my own mind always, I'm alone. There's no one that, can, you know, that struggles the way I do. And yet the reality of that is I'm not. Because the people around the same altar that I'm brought to, they're receiving the same gift, the same body and blood given for me for my forgiveness, and it keeps me and it sustains me uh, in this one true holy and Christian church. That's brilliant. Um, so can I, it, it might even just be another can of worms, but maybe we'll try to tackle it in just That's, a couple. Why? Um, why do we so often, when it comes to dealing with God, want to only frame questions in terms of the law? Because we're in sinful flesh. <laughs> it's what we okay. know by our own reason and strength. There. Okay. So it's what we know. That's what we know. I mean, yeah. and, and that that's, you know, that's the world we live in too, right? We sure. know eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, tit for tat, whatever you want to say it, uh, this for that. That's the law. That's the way of, uh, of, of really reason and the natural man, which mm-hmm. in certain instances, like if I'm doing math or I'm putting together you know, uh, a car, <laughs> not that I can do that, but yeah, I was going to say, you know what those I mean? would be like, bad sure, days for me, good, but, yeah. right? we got to have that. Right. So we, we, but, but those are, those are temporary things. And that's not, that's not the church. Uh, no. The church is where Jesus is. And, and there it actually, it puts a, a spin on the, 
the accusation that maybe we run from where we shouldn't, that that church is an unreasonable thing. Um, it's yes. supposed to be. Like, this is something to defy your yeah. reason. Why would anybody want to go here and lay themselves bare and and, and then be told about uh, somebody who they, they haven't met while they're surrounded by other hypocrites? Well, because that, that somebody died and rose from the grave. It, it defies the law. It, it actually is the gospel. Um, this is not then a, another place to sort of let things all add themselves up, but this is a place to utterly defy your expectations, to be confronted with uh, a gift, a free gift of mercy, of, of, of something to hope in when everything else is falling apart. Yep. And that, and that what you just said right there, the gospel mm. makes no sense in that sense. Uh, and that's why it has to be given. It has to come mm. from outside of us yeah. because it's not in me uh, because of the, you know, the inherited sin that I'm born into and you're born into and everybody's born into. Sure. I love but that. We're always going to ask those bad questions just because that's who we are yeah. in, in our sin, you know. That makes sense. Um, would you do me a solid then as you have time? Can I ask you more bad questions and just sort of let, let's reframe them together? I love it. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll, well, we'll you, have to get know, together. Because okay, okay, I asked the bad questions too. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if it's our default, then yeah, let's, let's have them reframed. Um, so That's yeah, cool. pastor, thanks so much for, for hanging out with us. Um, Absolutely. We'll, we'll have you back again soon and uh, ask more bad questions. I love it. <laughs> hey, take care. Thanks.